Hello, my name is George Fenton. I'm one of the team that's been working on the uh, ULS project, and I'm pleased to be presenting today to you the tutorial for the fleet management chapter. So fleet management uh, supports the essential movement of people focusing on the efficient management of cars and motorcycles. And the aim is to support activities that need to transport people, such as for field visits, for meetings, etc. cetera. Uh, fleet management also um, aims to optimize operating costs so make sure that you're uh, you know, uh, working to and managing vehicles uh, in, a, in a cost effective way uh, within budget. Um, also efficiently um, from an environmental point of view and to ensure the uh, good lifespan of, of vehicles, but also recognizing that vehicles don't last forever. So they need to be disposed of or there needs to be a plan to dispose of them. Um, also very important is the safety and security of passengers and as well, of course, other road users, pedestrians particularly. Um, and as I say, you know, the environmental impact of, of uh, and the general impact of uh, using vehicles needs to be well managed. The uh, ULS fleet management chapter covers the selection of vehicles, uh, the management of vehicles, uh, driver management, safety and security, issues related to regulations and policy compliance, and uh, ways to reduce environmental impact of, uh, of vehicle operations. So standard one you know, on vehicle selection, uh, and the standard states that the management and selection of vehicles is planned and optimized to meet operational needs. Um, when we're talking about the, the main key actions, it's important to make sure that the various stakeholders in your organization are involved to identify transport needs, such as looking at things like the road conditions, uh, travel times to different project sites, for field visits, etc. And other issues such as whether seasonal weather can cause uh, bad roads, um, other security issues. Uh, and so the type of vehicle you select is really important. If you're only going to be working in, a, in an urban environment or where there are good roads, you don't need a big four wheel drive vehicle. So it's much better to select a, a vehicle that uh, is suitable for uh, just moving people. Or maybe you just need a, uh, one person needs to be able to, to travel short distances, so a motorcycle might be appropriate. Um, so you also need to consider whether, how long you're going to be needing a vehicle for, uh, and how much funding money in the budget there is to, to, uh, to, act, to access a vehicle. Do you need to buy a vehicle? Um, so therefore, what is, you know, what is really the best way to access a vehicle? Do you, do you have to buy one? Can you rent one? Can you lease a vehicle? Or really is, is purchasing the only option? Um, and then you need to be clear about what the specifications are. If you, if you need to buy a vehicle, uh, then what, what type of vehicle do you need? As I was saying earlier, um, once you've decided on how you're going to get a vehicle, make a plan, whether it's a, a rented vehicle or a purchased vehicle, um, or even if you're just going to use taxis, uh, it's good to have a plan for transport uh, and the transport of people. Uh, make sure that um, your vehicle is, is acquired in line with donor regulations. Some donors have certain restrictions on the origin of a vehicle, you know, should it come from a certain country? Uh, is there flexibility? And above all, is everything in line with the budget? So other things that you need to think about, um, you know, when you're operating a vehicle is, is can you get the right type of fuel? Is, is petrol available? Is diesel available? Um, maybe there's biofuel available. Uh, and also, uh, how are you going to maintain the vehicle? Can you get spare parts? Uh, is there a, an authorized repair 
garage available nearby um and also you know do how many how many trips are you going to 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 be doing per week or per month or per year how many people are going to be needing to to move around how many vehicles do you need also think about um, things like insurance um, and a plan to replace the vehicle so if you have a long-term project then you may need to replace the vehicle during that that, that project or that program uh, typically vehicles in very very uh, difficult environments only last for three years say or less um, whereas a vehicle operating in a, in a um, on good roads can last for many years particularly if it's well maintained standard two relates to vehicle management and it states that all vehicles are managed cost effectively so here we're talking about making sure that there are procedures for good transport management um, <clears throat> good plans for vehicle usage, you know, daily usage, weekly or monthly usage. What's important is that you don't have too many vehicles so that you're not using them all the time. So you need to be planning for uh, using the vehicle um, most of the time. So typical vehicle utilization uh, should be around 80%. You do need to allow uh, some time, 10 or 10. 20% of the time for uh, maintenance, vehicle checks, etc. Uh, making sure that the drivers understand the importance of uh, checking tire pressures, oil level, etc. Um, and you also need to make sure that you're monitoring fuel consumption. Uh, it's good practice for there to be a logbook inside the vehicle so that uh, records can be kept. Um, sometimes it's possible to fit uh, special uh, uh, technology, black box technology that automatically monitors the use of the vehicle, the location, uh, speed of the vehicle, etc. Make sure that the, ve the vehicle fuel consumption is in line with, uh, with specified uh, parameters. You can set targets, uh, you can cross check between different vehicles of the same type because um, sometimes there could be a mechanical problem or there could be some problem related to fuel theft if, if uh, fuel consumption is very high. Um, you need to look at uh, other, other uh, issues such as uh, making sure that um, the vehicle is, is available for use. So if there are there um, problems with, with serviceability, if, if the vehicle is frequently not available for use, you need to inspect why. Um, and other things to consider on the, on the issue of fuel, you know, I should say that uh, fuel can account for up to 30% of, of operating costs. So that's why it's a very, very important um, uh, uh, indicator to, to monitor. And um, in terms of serviceability, you know, once a vehicle gets older, of course, it's going to cost more to maintain. And so therefore, it's preferable to replace a vehicle um, before they come, become too expensive to operate. And you need to be looking at, um, with your, together with your finance team, at the, what's called the total cost of ownership of vehicles um, so that you have a, a, good, a good way to monitor um, from a uh, accounting point of view, how much your vehicles are, are, operate, are costing to operate. Standard number three is about driver management. And the standard states that uh, drivers are managed to ensure the correct safe operation of vehicles. So drivers must have appropriate experience and of course a valid driver's license to operate in the country where you are. It's really important to train drivers on road safety and fuel efficient vehicle operation and basic maintenance, of course, um, as well as workplace safeguarding. And so the drivers must understand that you know, if you have a safeguarding policy, which is really important, that they understand what that means and what their roles and their responsibilities are for ensuring the safety um, and well-being of, of passengers. 
Drivers, of course, should be medically fit to drive. And so it's important to uh, conduct uh, medical, have, have drivers uh, undertake medical checks. Uh, eye, hearing and eyesight tests, of course, are important. Um, and in terms of driver recruitment, what we are advocating for, of course, more and more is, is you know, much more gender awareness. Uh, there needs to be the <clears throat> an approach to enabling female drivers to, to, um, to be encouraged to, to apply for, for jobs that might be available. Um, and then when, when drivers are um, working, they need to make sure, you need to make sure that they're well briefed with or, and uh, have all the information they need to be able to operate vehicles safely and efficiently. Indicators for good driver management are things like around, <clears throat> around uh, you know, making sure that there's, that there's a, a training plan in place and that training activities are recorded. Uh, you could uh, consider having a, an indicator around the percentage of drivers that are tested and trained annually. Um, and of course, there must be a complaints mechanism to allow passengers or other um, users in the perhaps or, or local community to uh, to complain if they they feel that uh, uh, vehicles or drivers are not uh, being used uh, vehicles are not being used properly or drivers are, are misbehaving in some way other things to consider are making sure that drivers are well briefed on security protocols um, that they understand humanitarian humanitarian principles and any expected codes of conduct related to your organization or, or the local operating environment. Um, and that make sure that there is a, a separation of roles between people who are managing drivers um, um, and people assigned to fleet management. Um, and so that, you know, there's a clear delineation of roles and responsibilities. Uh, and, Above all, set, set clear objectives for, for good performance of, of drivers. Standard number four relates to safety and security. And the standard states that vehicles are operated safely and securely. What this means is that everyone should um, understand their roles and responsibilities for safety and that staff should be empowered, for example, to refuse to travel in an unsafe vehicle or in a vehicle that they think is unsafe or with a driver that perhaps is not um, driving safely. Uh, you might want to consider implementing a, a trip approval process um, and security pro protocols where appropriate. So, you know, you're making sure that uh, senior managers are, are aware of, of uh, the importance of, of uh, signing off on, on a specific trip, you know, and not making trips when they're not necessary. It's really important to have a, a, an incident and accident or crash reporting process and procedures in place, uh, and that there, there is a, a, a way to, to monitor good Good performance of, of, uh, of uh, good, sa good safety standards. Um, and if you're using motorcycles, it's of course really critical to ensure that motorcycle riders use the protect correct protective clothing and other equipment. Indicators to consider when, when um, monitoring safety and security are things like, again, training and briefing sessions, making sure that the number of incidents and crashes are, are properly recorded, that action is taken if the number of incidents and crashes is, is, is deemed to be high. Um, you can also monitor things like uh, the number of speeding fines uh, or um, you know, highlights from reports that are generated through uh, black box technology uh, tracking systems uh, and again, it's important for there to be a complaints mechanism in place for both passengers and local communities to be able to report on any in, in issues of concern around safety and security. 
So above all, it's, in, it's really important to ensure that drivers and users comply with safety and security procedures um, and that tracking is, is done and compliance is, is, is uh, adhered to. Standard number five uh, states uh, is, is around regulation, uh, regulations and, and policy compliance. Um, and the standard states that all vehicles are operated in accordance with host country regulations and stakeholder policies and procedures. So key actions here are around ensuring awareness of local um, vehicle laws and regulations. Uh, and that vehicles have the required documentation. Sometimes that documentation, documentation must be carried inside the vehicle, so it's available for inspection. Uh, it's important, of course, to make sure that vehicles are correctly registered with the local authorities um, and that any records of annual safety inspections, et cetera, are maintained. And for insurance, you must have a minimum of, of uh, third party insurance and that insurance must, of course, be valid. So it's important to track the dates for registration and insurance uh, renewals. Indicators to consider are related to documentation and insurance largely, but um, things like uh, uh, ensure that the, the vehicle uh, has the required uh, documentation available um that um there's you have the right level of insurance cover obviously minimum third party but comprehensive insurance is usually recommended um and then another way to monitor uh is to ensure that the in number of insurance claims per rep per reporting period per month or per year or whatever are monitored other things to consider is that it may be uh, necessary to purchase additional cover to supplement any any local insurance that's available uh, above all to make sure that um, an organization's liability uh, to uh, is, is is sufficient to cover driver and passengers as well as um, other third parties and the final standard standard six is around environmental impact and the standard states that environmental impact of vehicle operations is minimized. What that means is uh, things like you must operate vehicles that are appropriate for the conditions. So if you're only operating in, in a town, then you shouldn't be using a big um, uh, fuel inefficient vehicle, a four wheel drive vehicle. You must use a, a you know, smaller vehicle, a fuel efficient vehicle. Um, so, in, you know, using um, a small urban saloon car um, or a car that's suitable for urban purposes or, or short trips um, is much more uh, fuel efficient, of course. Uh, if you're using motorcycles, it's best to use four stroke engines, not two stroke engines, which burn a lot of oil and create a lot of uh, pollution. Um, and if it's feasible, you know, now uh, there are more hybrid or electric vehicles becoming available. So, of course, that's that's a good thing to consider to use uh, as opposed to combustion engines, vehicles with combustion engines. Um, in any case, uh, it's really important to to make sure that drivers are trained on what's called eco driving so that they they have good eco driving skills, you know, not accelerating and braking too hard, etc. Um, and uh, it's also really important to make um, consideration, have good consideration for environmental uh, impact when selecting vehicles. So as I say, choosing the right type of vehicle, whether it's a purchased, purchased vehicle or you're using vehicles that are rented or leased, uh, use the right type of vehicle. Um, and of course, newer vehicles rather than older vehicles are more fuel efficient, more environmentally friendly. Uh, other indicators to, to monitor are, again, fuel consumption and driver training sessions around uh, environmental awareness and eco-driving. And further considerations include um, 
when say in terms of maintenance thinking about uh, waste management and the safe disposal of of used oil or old batteries and old tires etc um, and of course if if you have an, a number of uh, vehicles in in your fleet it's, it's best to, to to standardize on one vehicle one type of vehicle so you know you're you're having um you know uh, not only is it sort of more environmentally uh, friendly to do that um because it uh, you know can optimize your operations it optimizes your your maintenance um and reduces waste uh so yeah, I, I say again, consider using environmental indicators as a factor to determine vehicle end of life too. So if your vehicle is is uh, becoming um, you know old, inefficient, burning a lot of fuel, using a lot of oil, it's time to dispose of it. And so therefore, again, it's good to have a good vehicle disposal policy. So that's it. I think uh, I hope that that was a useful um, briefing. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact the ULS team. Thank you very much.